cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything. And over a year ago, I made a video where I used this application called Gravity Sketch to sculpt some rock climbing holds in virtual reality. Whoa. There it is. Yeah, so I sculpted these holds, I printed them out, and they came out looking really cool. But as it turned out, the materials just weren't up to par. PLA was a little bit too slippery and just not very strong. And then I tried out Protopasta's carbon fiber filament, which was definitely more strong, but a little bit too brittle. Well, not too long after posting that video, I got contacted by a filament manufacturer called Rigid Ink, and they had just developed this carbonite filament, which is a blend of carbon fiber and nylon 12. So I thought this might be the perfect material for what I had to accomplish. Carbon fiber is nice, it's got that dryness that makes it good for rock climbing holds, and it's also very hard, but then nylon 12 is way more durable. It's got a little bit more flexibility in it so that it might survive better on that climbing wall. Rigid Ink sent me some of that carbonite filament so I could try it out and give this project a second shot. So that's what I'm gonna do today. And I also used a different VR sculpting application, Google Blocks. So we're gonna see what that looks like. Let's get right into it. All right, here we are in Google Blocks. And this was my very first time opening up the application. So I decided to just play around a bit and see what the different tools do. So the first tool here lets you drop down primitive shapes, and that's pretty simple. And then there's also a tool that lets you grab the shapes and move them around. And you can also select multiple shapes to move them as a whole. We've got an eraser to get rid of unwanted parts. And then there's this stroke tool, which I found really cool. It's pretty similar to Gravity Sketch in that you can draw 3D strokes, but Google Blocks produces a more low poly type feel, and it kind of draws out in chunks, as you can see there. For my first hold though, I think I'm just gonna start with the primitive shapes. Maybe I'll drop in a couple spheres, and then I can manipulate those to make it look a little more organic. So I'll just make a pair of spheres like that to create the general shape. And then I can use this modify tool to grab individual points or faces and move those around to start getting a little bit more interesting with my shape. I can also select multiple edges with that select tool, and that helps me make bigger changes. So those are all the general tools behind Google Blocks. It's very simple and easy, so I kind of like that. I'll just go ahead and work my way around and start deforming these spheres more and more until they no longer look like spheres and they become more like rocks or crystals even. There is the one other tool, which is to be able to paint but I guess that's not really too useful for 3D printing, but it does help us visualize if we do want to decide what colors we're going to print in and things like that. For now, since this is a rock, I'll just make it gray. All right, at this point it's looking pretty good, and what I'm going to do is insert a cube and use that to kind of simulate what my part will look like once I slice the bottom off. Since right now it's this giant three-dimensional chunk, but for the climbing hold, we're gonna want it to be flat on the bottom. So I'll just take this cube and kind of stretch it out to create a ground plane. And let's also paint that cube another color so that it's really nice and easy to visualize. All right, there we go. So you can see I've got some cool points. I've got some interesting shapes. Looks good. So let's just go ahead and click this little floppy disk and save it. Funny that they still use a floppy disk for the save icon, huh? All right, so when you save in Google Blocks, it automatically gives you an OBJ file, and I'm gonna bring that into 3D Builder to work on this a little bit further. So let's go ahead and orient this flat, and then we'll use the Settle tool to make it lay flat on the ground plane. And then we can go ahead to Edit and use the Split tool to cut away that block on the bottom and just leave us with the shape of our climbing hold. All right, I can adjust that a bit if I want, but I basically want to keep as much as I can. So we'll bring it all the way down and then I'll split it. Next, I'm going to do an extrude down so that I have a bit of an edge at the bottom of my part because it does have some very pointy parts that would be difficult to print. So by giving it a bit of a straight extrude down and then splitting that again, I can give myself a little edge that's easier to print, I think. And then I'll settle it again to lay it flat on the building plane. Uh, I can go ahead and click that repair tool to make sure it's a nice seamless shape. 
and then we'll go ahead and save it out from here as an STL file. The next step is to move into Fusion 360. And I know I'm using a lot of different software here, but they're all free, so that's pretty awesome. I wanna bring my STL into Fusion 360, but before I do that, I'm gonna right click up here and go to Do Not Capture Design History. And that's gonna allow me to convert my STL into a solid model, which I can further edit in Fusion 360. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use this Insert Mesh tool and find that STL. I'll orient it correctly and bring it in. As you can see, the bottom there is pretty messy, but we'll take care of that a little later. For now, let's just go back into the modeling environment, right click and select Mesh to B-Rep. And that's basically just the solid shape that Fusion 360 uses. Now it turns into that nice gray color and we can start working on it. The first thing we have to do here is scale it up to be the appropriate size that I want it to be once we print it out. So I'm just gonna sketch this 120 millimeter circle as a rough reference for the size. Then I'll go ahead and use the scale tool to scale up my body until it sort of fills up that circle. All right, so now we know this is a good size. And the next thing I'm gonna do is clean up this bottom since we want it to be perfectly flat when we're printing. So I'll just sketch on the bottom plane here and I'll draw a giant rectangle that covers the entire model. Then I can do an extrude cut to cut away the bottom and make it completely flat. For some reason, the bottom part of the model was producing an error, so I had to offset it a couple millimeters for Fusion 360 to actually be able to cut away the bottom. That's okay for now. I mean, this is pretty much a random shape, so if I lose a few millimeters on the bottom, it's no big deal. So I'll just go ahead, cut that away, and now you can see the bottom has no edges. It's just a nice, clean, flat bottom. Next up, I decided to cut away this really pointy part since it looks like it could be difficult to print. And also we might just not want such a pointy part for a rock climbing hold. So I'll go ahead and cut away this little triangle. I gotta make sure to select all of that triangle. There we go. And now I'll just go ahead and add a taper to create the cut that I want. Let's set that to 40 degrees. There we go. Now that edge isn't quite so pointy and it still looks pretty good. So that's our hold. The next thing we have to do is create the hole that we're gonna put the bolt through to hold this onto the wall. So to do that, I'll first create a section analysis along this YZ plane. And that allows me to see inside and make sure that I'm putting my hole in an area that's thick enough so that it can actually be strong. So we'll go right here and draw out a half profile of the bolt so that we'll be able to revolve this to make the cut. So I'll just go ahead and draw that and also put in the dimensions based on the measurements I took from the actual bolt that we'll be using. All right, this looks good. So now we can go ahead to create and revolve, and then we'll select that profile and revolve it around the center axis. And we've got the perfectly shaped hole for our bolt. Now we can turn off that section analysis to see what the whole thing looks like. And it looks really good. I'm definitely happy with this. So we could save this out and start printing, but I am gonna do one more thing in order to guarantee some real strength with this climbing hold. I'm gonna sketch another revolve along the same axis that we made that bolt hole. And here I'm gonna do a kind of tapered cone shape. So it'll be wide at the very bottom here where the hold is. And then I'll go up here and cap it off just a little bit higher than that lip for the bolt. Once again, I'll use the revolve tool and select that profile, but this time I'm gonna create a new body. Next, I'm gonna go here to the timeline and I'm gonna make a copy of both the rock and that little cone shape that I made. That way I have two copies of both parts. With that, I can go ahead and use the combine tool to first cut away that cone shape from the hold. And then using my second pair of copies, I'm gonna use combine again, but I'm gonna use the intersect command, which will leave me with the remaining part of the hold. Combined, we have the same shape that we started with, but by doing this, I'll be able to save the two parts out as separate STLs and apply different settings to them when I'm 3D printing. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'll save them both out as STLs and I'll use the high refinement setting here. And now we can bring them into my slicer. Here we are in Simplify 3D. I brought in those two parts of the rock climbing hold and now I'll go ahead and rotate it and orient it on the build plate. I can use this command to align the parts to make sure they're perfectly combined. And then what I'm gonna do is make two separate processes for each of these parts. I already have a profile here for printing with nylon using a large nozzle. 
So we'll set the nozzle diameter to one millimeter since that's the nozzle I'm gonna be using on my replicator too. And we can start changing the settings for the hold. We'll go ahead and change the layer height. Let's make it 0.4 millimeters. That should be enough to capture the detail but still get this print done pretty quickly. And next we'll increase the number of top and bottom solid layers to make this a nice strong shell for us to climb on. And we'll also give this two perimeters which normally isn't too much, but with a one millimeter nozzle, that gives us a two millimeter thick wall, which should be pretty good with this carbonite material. We'll also bring up the infill percentage to 35%. We don't want this to be hollow because it needs to be really strong, but we also don't need it to be completely solid, especially since this filament is more expensive than your standard PLA. We can slow down the print, make sure the first layer is especially slow and then we'll go ahead and make a few other small changes. But overall, that looks pretty good. So let's hit OK, and then we can reorient our model to make it fit onto the build plate for my replicator too. And now what I'm gonna do is copy the profile that we just made, and I'll make a second version for that little cone shape we cut out around the bolt. So the reason that I did that is so that I can make this part solid, since this is where most of the force is gonna be concentrated from that bolt really tightly holding the hold onto the wall. Most of the other settings can remain the same, although I'm gonna go here to the internal infill angle and add a few more different directions because I think that might increase the strength as well. Now I can click this select models button and make sure that this 100% infill only applies to that little cone part. And then I'll go into the first process we made and make that only apply to the rest of the hold. Now I can select both processes and send that to preview. Whoops, I accidentally had a vase mode applied. Let's definitely not do that. I'll go ahead and unselect those, but now we can preview it. All right, here we go. I can go ahead and look through the layers. And as you can see, we've got the part split up into those two processes, the blue being the 35% infill and the red being the solid core. Awesome, let's send it to print. Now, as I said, we're printing this on my Replicator 2 printer because at the time of filming this, I didn't have as many fancy printers as I do have now. So I was stuck with the Replicator, which doesn't have a heated bed. So to try to get this nylon to stick down, I went ahead and just used this needle tool to put scratches all over my Z plate and hopefully create more grip because nylon is notorious for warping and not sticking flat to the build plate. Once I did that, I started the print. Nice and slow. We'll go ahead and jump to my successful print. As you can see, I did end up printing on masking tape because that whole scratching up technique didn't really work. And the tape here did a decent job, but there is still a bit of warping right around the edges. But as you can see, we've got that center core and the part itself is super hard. It's impossible for me to flex, and it also feels really good. So that's pretty awesome. Here's another little foot chip that I printed out. It's smaller, so it had less warping going on, but it also wasn't perfect. But beyond those first layers, it looks really great. Super clean, and I love how it looks with those big step lines from printing at that 0.4 millimeter layer height. With those successful prints, I moved on to a much larger hold, and as you can see here, this time I set the bottom solid layers to zero, that way you can see the infill. And I also have a lot of shells going around to make this nice and thick. My theory was that by leaving that infill exposed on the bottom surface, it would produce more friction and grip onto the climbing wall a little bit better so that these parts don't rotate when people are jumping on them. Here's the hold, and once again, it came out looking really cool. I love the way that this carbonite filament has a really kind of matte look, and it's just really rough and rock-like. It's kind of the perfect texture for a climbing hold. For my final print, I tried to use a glue stick on top of that blue tape to hold things down, but once again, we had the same issue where there was a slight bit of curling around the edges of the print. It was pretty important for me to get rid of that warping on the bottom layers because we need the climbing hold to fit flush against the wall, otherwise it could be a bit dangerous. 
So my first attempted solution was to blast these parts with the heat gun for quite a long time since this is a high temperature plastic. And then I just tried to push it flat against this metal sheet. But this material is just so hard and so strong that I was barely able to make a difference doing it this way. So next I decided to fire up the belt sander and just tried to sand the bottom flat. The reason I didn't try this immediately was that I thought the plastic would get really hot and kind of start clogging up the sandpaper. But by taking it nice and slow and being careful not to let that plastic overheat, I was able to successfully sand these parts. Now, as I said, the carbon fiber in this filament makes the parts extremely hard, so it did take a lot of sanding, but eventually I was able to get this really clean, flat, smooth bottom surface. I also sanded away at the edges for some of these parts so that they weren't quite so pointy. For my largest hole here, I decided to drill a second hole because it's common to put a wood screw through a second part of the hole so that the part can't rotate once it's on the wall. And my drill had no problem creating that hole, although I didn't actually end up using it. Alright, here we are at the factory climbing gym in Orange, California. And once again, the setters were nice enough to put my holds on the wall and try them out. And this time, they were actually willing to keep them up there for several weeks. Here they are trying them out, and we decided to use them as footholds since those are going to get put through the most abuse. And they also are a little bit awkward shapes for holding on with your hands. Here I am trying out the holds two weeks later after they've already been put through a lot of testing by the public and they work just great. They're still on the wall. They haven't broken. Everything looks good. All right guys, so there they are, my 3D printed rock climbing holds part two. And I know four little holds on a wall might not seem like the most exciting thing, but I made some real progress with this iteration. I got these holds, they feel great, they seem super durable, I mean they held up on a wall at a public climbing gym for three weeks. That is a pretty good proof of concept, and with the success of these, I'm feeling pretty confident that I could make a whole climbing wall using 3D printed holds. So I guess that's the next step. I might be building a rock climbing wall that's fully 3D printed. I could definitely still improve the holds a bit. Uh, for one thing, I could print them on a printer with an enclosure so that they actually print flat and I don't have to do quite so much sanding. And as suggested by the setters at the climbing gym, putting some washers inside of this bolt area would help distribute the forces and make these last a little longer as well. I do need to work on my shaping of the holds to make them more effective for rock climbing. That's something I'll have to research, but I'm very excited for where we got with this step. I'm very excited for the next stage and hopefully building an actual rock climbing wall. But that's it for today. So until then, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and don't forget to stay inspired. <laughs>